Hello, this is Al Koritz. I am Applications and Service Manager with Electron Microscopy Sciences and today I'd like to go over our EMS 5000 uh, tissue slicer or OTS 5000 as we call it. This is what the unit looks like on your desktop, the main unit and the control box. Now let's have a quick look at all the accessories that come with the 5000 model. These are the accessories that come with the 5000 uh, tissue slicer. Here we have the sectioning tray. Here we have the tiltable specimen uh, stage which you can mount your sample and do small uh, tilt variations to correct uh, for angle differences that you want to remove if you've cut the brain slightly uh, off angle you can correct for this right next to that we have the tissue block holder both of these items fit into the uh, the sectioning tray here we have some small cubical aluminum blocks which you can mount your samples to and they get uh, uh, locked into place in this vice holder and we also have some very large blocks which go in there uh, for larger samples in the back here we have a magnifying lens which attaches to the main unit we have the power cord and we have the foot switch if you've received the 4500, not the 5000 model, some of these accessories do not come standard with that unit. First thing uh, to you do to mount the magnifying glass is you lift the, the quick disconnect here and it slides down over that post. Uh, my personal preference is I very seldom use that. However, other people might find it useful. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the power cord into the rear of the machine and plug it into the wall and turn the unit on. As you can see, a LED light uh, is present uh, to allow you to observe uh, what's happening in the sectioning tray uh, as you're cutting. The next thing we'll do is I position the uh, control panel in a convenient spot. It has a fairly long cord uh, so you can sit there with the uh, everything in your lap and the first thing that we do is we press home Home retracts the arm if it was forward and raises it up to its highest position. The 4500 model has the same controller and looks the same except it doesn't have some of these added features uh, which makes sectioning a bit more convenient. Now let's go over some of the features of the OTS 5000. Uh, here mounted on the cutting arm is the knife holder assembly, uh, this little Allen key uh, hex head uh, screw holds the blade in place. On the side of the blade holder it's graduated in degrees. Uh, which allows you to adjust the knife angle to something that uh, cuts well for you. Uh, personally, I don't play with it too much. Uh, I've been sectioning with this type of instrument since 1979. Uh, I usually start at 25 degrees, uh, sort of right in the middle of the road. and you fix that by tightening down the screw. 
The display has a slice and thickness counter. It has an oscillation speed, an oscillation advance, and those are controlled by these blue keys here on the uh, keyboard. Uh, you just uh, can press them individually or press them and hold them and it goes uh, up and down according to what you're uh, pressing. If it's flashing it means it's a half step. Uh, Non-flashing is a whole step. My usual starting values are about 10 on both. Uh, this adjusts your thickness, currently um, incrementing up uh, to somewhere in the middle 160 micron range. Let's just leave it at minus one, uh, 150. Zero zeroes out the section counter. So it tells you how many sections you've taken at 150 microns. Here we have blade position up and down. The arm moves very slowly but it is indeed moving. And again if you press up it will go up. Press forward and the arm comes forward. You can set a cutting window or a travel window by pressing this, advancing the knife to the point where it passes through whatever tissue you're cutting. Press forward again to stop it. Press forward limit. Then you can press start and stop and it will automatically cut sections of that thickness and that length of a cutting window until you stop it. And once you've cut through your sample or you're finished with it, you press home, the arm retracts, the arm goes all the way back up uh, as high as it will go. And you can of course zero the section counter. And that's it as far as uh, controls go. Um, the 4500 model does not allow you to set cutting windows, uh, nor does the home button work. So you would have to manually advance or retract the, uh, uh, the blade position, and raise it up, raise it all the way to reverse uh, when you're done sectioning for that amount of time. The next thing I like to do is uh, insert uh, one of the uh, razor blades or cutting edges that come with the system. Uh, these are sized so they fit in uh, perfectly. There's a backstop which will allow you to position the knife in perpendicular uh, and lock it into place. The next thing I will do is I will put on the fluid tray and you see how I, I did that. This is the sectioning tray. This is uh, a room temperature sort of sectioning tray. You can put cold buffer in there there is a separate stage and controller which I'm not demonstrating today 
which will have a uh, cooling stage attached. Uh, that's how it gets attached and once you have the blade in one you have to be very careful that you don't uh, uh, skewer yourself. Uh, the next thing I will do is I will put uh, the temporary block holder into place and for that I require apart from the other uh, stage loosen the knurled knob here on top slides down inside the unit then you extend this so it's off and you give it maximum extension to lock it into place so now everything is firmly attached in the cutting chamber. Then all I do is I tighten down the nylon screw with my fingers and then carefully slide this back into position. Now I'm going to lock it into place with these two screws on either side uh, but I am not going to slide it all the way back until I mount a piece of tissue and today um, I've just made some agarose uh, 3% uh, to use as a cutting media and I use this uh, uh, L block which will allow you to pour uh, agar over a brain this is low, low temperature agar um, melts at uh, 37 degrees so you don't overheat the brain there is no brain in there because you know this laboratory uh, we don't use uh, uh, li we don't keep live animals nor uh, do we have the protocols in place to uh, work with them and harvest uh, biological materials so this is just plain ag agar and uh, this just simply peels away and I will cut it down to size on one of our cutting boards. Uh, since I made a relatively large block. Uh, just to show you, you can adjust this uh, so you can make blocks of various sizes uh, depending on your need. A uh, very handy device. Uh, I'll put the part number uh, up on the screen but it's 62361-03. Uh, I'll just set that aside. Um, now I am just going to use a regular razor blade uh, to trim this uh, agar block uh, down to size um, so uh, I can put it on the uh, stage. Okay, now I've trimmed down a small piece of agar. Uh, always being mindful of the cutting edge nearby. size of a typical uh, rodent brain. Uh, so I have some what we call tissue adhesive.
loosen the screws on the side of the tray, slide it forward, and normally I would add buffer. Uh, this is just uh, water. And you just uh, bring it over on uh, top of the top of the specimen if you wanted to put a bubbler in bubbling uh, oxygen in uh, you could certainly do that so I'm going to bring the arm forward and stop it just before the edge of the tissue press reverse limit ahead and advance it to the end put the forward limit now I'm going to reverse it a little bit and I'm going to bring the cutting arm down to the point where it makes contact with the water. And make sure that the cutting window is fine. It is. So when it reaches the rear, I'm going to stop it and now I'll bring the cutting arm down a little further so we get uh, some water wetting the surface of the knife and now I'll put it into multiple slice mode and Already I've cut a pretty big slice. Obviously I would take a bit more care if I was working with uh, a sample. But since this is only agar, I should use a little food coloring in there uh, so it's easier to see. You want to keep the advance speed as, uh, as slow as possible. You want to be cutting the tissue and not pushing the tissue. front of the solution tray is clear so you can see the height above your your sample nearly impossible to see but 50 micron uh, uh, thick uh, agar sections.
places are very difficult to see because they're clear, they're not like normal brain, but you can see them uh, all accumulating uh, down here in the front of the tray. Uh, these could be fished out by various means uh, and the sections uh, put to use and a free-floating section uh, tray and stained uh, for whatever process uh, you might be doing. you would want to uh, stop the device before it uh, impacted the block. But you can see uh, a large number of translucent uh, sections uh, floating around here in the boat. Uh, <laughs> I do believe next time I will uh, add some food coloring to the agar uh, this way they can be easily seen Once you're done sectioning you, with the 5000, you press home, the knife uh, retracts, and it goes up to the very top position of travel, resets the travel window uh, for the next time. Of course, the first thing that I will do for safety reasons is loosen and remove the, the blade uh, from the holder. I'll tighten down the screw so it doesn't get lost. I will carefully remove the tray as not to spill any of the buffer. Of course, you would be removing the sections as you go. I would then, with these two screws, remove the entire cutting head, rinse it in, uh, in tap water to remove all the salts, then in some distilled water and let it air dry and then reattach it to the machine when you're done. Uh, same thing with everything in the tray, rinse it with uh, tap water then distilled water, let it air dry, uh, wipe down any salts that, uh, that got on the machine, and uh, power it down and you're ready for the next time.